Well, good afternoon. Oh, this is a bit rare, isn't it? This is a video going, a going pro video. Let me shut the windows. I tell you, we don't get too much noise. Oh, these couple of Is that open? Yes, I think it is. They've got a hedge outside the front. If you go, if you look at this morning's video on the way in, you'll see it's trimmed on the left and not on the right. And uh, this now they're going to trim it on the right. It's literally 30 centimeters tall and about 40 centimeters across. And there's about uh, 10 yards of it. And it takes them two days to do the whole lot. Because I think he cuts it with nail scissors. I don't know why. That's an old car, isn't it? What's that? Old Triumph Herald there. Park there. Yeah, this is a sort of a back. You see all the traffic in front. That's what, where I would join normally. But if they leave the back gate open, you can. I can come out and use this road. Anyway, so I thought I'd, um, every time I do a video, I keep thinking to myself, oh, I've got to um, mention this or I've got to mention that. And because I always stick to a theme, I tend to not do the odds and, you know, the odd bits. So this is just a ramble on the way home of various stupid stuff. But I'll start off with something that's useful which is that we had a, a new patient and uh, booked in and it's for our, our new patient examination is 78 pounds that's fully inclusive so it, we don't charge extra for x-rays or anything um, let me just see if someone's going to let me out probably not no you're not are you no you're not, oh yes you are, nice lady, thank you. Nasty Vauxhall in front. Yeah, so, um, and uh, 78 pounds, so, and you know we do this thing where we, they pay in advance, so. He paid in advance, I think he must have paid Wednesday evening for a Friday appointment. And then on Friday morning, he then rings up, his wife rings up and says he can't come in, he's sick. So we're like, okay, that's fine, no problem. Now they should have um, probably made point of saying that like, I'm sorry he's done his deposit but uh, uh, the, apparently the line was really bad and she didn't want to hang around and debate because I should imagine he was probably you know he told her to bring up tell, tell him I'm sick and she's like I'm not ringing up for you and he's like oh yes you are anyway so she's rung up and says he can't come in he's sick uh, he'll get in touch bye and that's what they normally do so she should have made more perhaps of a point of the same lot. Just don't forget he's done his deposit. But <clears throat> anyway, he's rung up to make another appointment and been told that he needs to pay again. And, uh, and he's uh, gone off on one. <coughs> so because he was being nasty about it, the uh, staff asked me to take it when he rang back the second time. And... Uh, so I had a chat with him and they always say the same thing, you know, they say, oh. <clears throat> usually it goes along the lines of, I was puking up down the toilet. You don't want to see someone for a checkup, do you? If they're puking all over the place, like, you know, because they think, oh, they've got to say no to that, haven't they? They can't say, yeah, you should have come in and puked up everywhere. But uh, basically I'm, I'm quite straightforward about it. I say, actually, that's not the, the problem problem is that we take responsibility if you want to cancel or change your appointment up to 48 hours in advance but after that 40 hours, that hours is up then it's down to you if you if something comes up or you know and I, and I told him this I said it's like uh, you know if you if you have to go and search for your granddad because he's escaped from the local residential care or if your dog's sick or your car won't start or something then you, uh, within 48 hours, you take the risk of that happening, that means that you can't come in, including puking up all over the place. 
So of course they don't like that. They do not like that. And <clears throat> at that point, this is your problem, right? This is your problem. They are almost certainly not going to accept that. However, they are in, not in such a good position as they used to be because you used to ring them up and say you've missed this appointment you owe me 78 quid and they used to say well good luck getting it copper um, so so now the, the shoe is on the other foot we have actually already got the 78 quid but they don't think that we should be keeping it we should be refunding it so it's up to them to get it off of us so your problem is that you know they they will argue up with you up to a point but there's no point in them arguing with you beyond a certain point because they are not they, they don't know your system well enough and they don't and and also they've never they haven't read anything right so they haven't read their invoices they haven't read their terms and conditions they haven't seen it they haven't read your website or anything so they're going to get to a point where your knowledge is going to far exceed theirs and that point is when you start saying things to them like you know the shift the burden of responsibility of a failed appointment uh, shifts 48 hours before the appointment from me to you now the other problem you're going to have is that these people are not clever people they're not very bright people so let's say that you were able to come up with some stunningly clever and logically irrefutable proof that you're in the you're in the right and they're in the wrong all they're going to do is uh, shout knickers and hang up they're not they're not going to say well mr watson now you put it to me like that i can i can quite see why you do things the way you do and and uh, i can see that i'm in the wrong and i do most humbly and sincerely apologize they're not going to do that i'll tell you what they're going to go they're going to say something stupid, something juvenile, and hang up on you. They always do. And the best thing to do is get, get your retaliation in first. Because you're going to feel like shouting at them. When they hang up on you, you're, you're going to feel like really stressed. And so the best thing to do is to, while you're still in the reasonable like, explanation phase, say something to like, you know, uh, you know, this is, what a shame you didn't read all the information that we gave you when we sent you the appointment and then, which is on every invoice and and which is you know um it's, it's so obvious that we put it on every bit of written communication that this is how it works and they'll say something like well you know if i'd known you know that was how it worked i wouldn't have made an appointment and you can then say uh well if you were didn't accept that that was the way that it worked then you shouldn't have made an appointment. That is correct. And when and that's the point at which they'll shout, blow a raspberry, shout knickers, and hang up, right? Okay. But at least you've you've told them off a bit, you know. At least you've, as I say, you've told them that you know they're a think they're a bit dumb for not reading anything and just assuming that they knew how things work. Because that's where the error comes from. The fact that they assume that things work a certain way. And uh, uh, if they've been to other dentists where, uh, you know, they've been able to ring up or their wife's been able to ring up and say, oh, John's sick, I'm afraid he won't be coming in for his appointment, uh, we'll get in touch with you. And the, uh, and, the, and the surgery's got no option but to really put on a f fixed grin and say, oh dear, I hope he, I hope he gets better soon please do get in touch with us when he's he's feeling better then they're gonna you know they're gonna think they've got away with it before and that they can get away with it again um, I mean the fact that they've had to pay in advance really should be a bit of a red flag shouldn't it from their point of view that they're not gonna that things don't work like that in my surgery and that they're not going to get away with it and uh, they're not they shouldn't just assume they can cancel and certainly that they, they sh you know I mean, I, I don't. Uh, how can I put it? I don't hold it against the patient for not reading all the stuff we send through. I mean, personally, I do read all the stuff that people send through. Uh, I don't mind. I'll sit down and 
I'll read the terms and conditions. Not on a website, but you know, if I take out, uh, buy something from Curry's and I get a guarantee, I'll have a little look, you know. But you don't have to read all the stuff about it's being enforceable in the courts of England and Wales, blah, blah, blah. But there's, there's, a, there's a bit of stuff, you know, I'll read um, termination clauses and stuff. Uh, and especially if it's a firm like, uh, if it's got British in the name, then I'll definitely read the terms and conditions. So if it's British Airways or British Telecom or British Oxygen Company, uh, mate, they, those terms and conditions get read very thoroughly because uh, they're the ones that rip you off, you know? They're the ones that, uh, that have got the clever lawyers saying, we'll slip this into this, the small print because nobody ever reads the small print. I mean, I do read the small print. In fact, when people give me stuff to sign, like if you go down the opticians and they say, here's the thing, just sign this, I will sit, I will sit there and read it. But I, w I do that because, first of all, I'm quite a fast reader. Secondly, I've seen a lot of these documents, so I know more or less what I'm looking at. Thirdly, I'm very capable of um, interpreting what I'm, what I'm being asked to sign. And, and fourthly, I can make quite a quick decision about whether or not I should sign it. So, and it's, you know, I think some people would say, oh, it's embarrassing that I'll just sign it, just sign it, you know. But if someone gives you a bloody great screed of text and says, can just sign underneath the bottom here, you know, like if it's a car hire or something, I'll say, well, just a second, you know, you didn't warn me I was gonna get like Jane Eyre first chapter to read so it's going to take me a while to to read this you know it's obviously a lot of text here and what can they do all they can do is they can say fine if you wouldn't mind stepping to one side i'll deal with someone else while you're reading it and then you'll still be at the front of the queue when you finish you know so you know should should this bloke have noticed from all the the written stuff that we sent him because we send him a welcome to the practice we send him a, your next appointment is, we send him um, an invoice, which says uh, you need to pay X amount by such and such a day, that says if it's not paid, your appointment might be canceled. Uh, we've got a website that says, if you uh, do not attend, you will be charged as if you had attended. It's all there in black and white. But people can choose to read it, or they can choose not to read it. It's up to them, isn't it? It's not, I don't, I don't hold it against them if they decide not to read it. I think it's silly of them not to at least have, a, have an idea of what's going on. But you know, for, for all I know, this bloke is, is completely illiterate. That would be very unusual these days. Um, but when I qualified in the early 80s, it was, you know, you used to, um, I mean, that's why we go through the medical history question by question, because you can't just give someone a sheet of paper and say, can you just read through this and if you're happy, sign at the bottom, right? You know, your medical history. Because it's quite possible that someone doesn't have the skills to, to read uh, that quickly or that, you know, that well. And what happens is people who can't read, uh, especially adults who can't read, uh, tend to uh, hide it, you know? And what they'll do is they'll say something like, um, uh, can you read it to me? I've left my glasses at home. I can't, I can't see it, yeah? I've left my glasses at home or something like that. They've got all these things that they say. And um, so, so if someone does say that to you, then you have to assume that there's a 10% a chance that they have forgotten their reading glasses, and a 90% chance that they really can't read. And then the other thing that they do is, uh, they look at it like in a knowledgeable way, with a full eyebrows and stuff like that, nod a couple of times, and they say, okay, yeah, fine, fine. And then they'll sign it. Now they'll sign it without having the slightest clue what it is that they're signing. But they've avoided the embarrassment of saying to you, look, I'm ever so sorry, you know, my, 
I was my mother's carer. I never went to school, so I can't read, unfortunately, or I'm, uh, you know, I'm severely dyslexic, and I wouldn't understand it. But so, and they've got away with it, haven't they? And that's about the only time that that, that, that you might ask them to read something. And so, really, from then on, you know, so a ton of the stuff we send out probably doesn't get read. Uh, my last uh, guy who I work with, Colin Logan, he was a great fan of uh, a one, the one page quote. He said, what people want is something that's really quick and easy and uh, uh, that they can just skim and, and agree. So he would like to, he would do a one page quote for a crown, you know, you need a crown. This is the cost of the crown. Please sign here. But then his problem was that he would also do a one page quote for a two all on four implant retained superstructures. And it would be of exactly the same format. Two implant retained superstructures, as discussed, 30 grand, payable by such and such a date. So we had a big disagreement over this in that he said to me my quotes were far too verbose and uh, detailed and, and probably none of them got read and I'm sure he wasn't right about the first two but he might have been right about the third because the, uh, my understanding of quotes is that you have to list all the reasonable uh, complications and possible outcomes and you know for a patient to make informed consent, they have to possess the knowledge that not only that a reasonable person might want, but that a reasonable person might want, but not know that they want, you know, they're not, not know, because they don't know what to ask. So uh, what you have to put, put everything in, err on the side of completeness. So if I send someone a quote like I did today for, let's say a tooth that needs a root filling, and then a core, a crown and who's got some other fillings that'll be you know my quotes vary from say 12 to 17 pages long of a4 and believe me there's not having having honed them over the last sort of eight or nine years uh, it's very rare now that I think of something oh my god no that should be in the in the warnings on the quote you know there's some pretty uh, esoteric stuff that I picked up over the last 40 years that are in the warnings on my quotes. Stuff that I know is uh, complication, but uh, probably not, not generally regarded as uh, one of the complications you should necessarily, that, that's in the textbooks, you know? Um, but there are other complications, you know, that you pick up from experience. My denture uh, quote, for example, states quite clearly that you cannot simply declare yourself to be constitutionally unfit for dentures and then hand them back and get a refund. You know, I'm not. I'm not just because you say I can't wear them. That is not. That is not a refund. Uh, you know, you have to prove that the dentures are uh, faulty in some way, and not only that they are faulty in some way. That that was a way that I was aware of and could and should have fixed. Uh, so, you know, th these quotes are. Very much, they're a bit like insurance policies. When you talk to the underwriters and you say, well, uh, you know, can I see the actual uh, terms of the policy? They're like, well, you know, well, we're, we're very uh, cagey about our underwriting because uh, we don't want it to get copied. You know, it's our almost like proprietary uh, intellectual property. So anyway, this uh, guy's, uh, anyway, he's after a 7 Jane Graham. So the stupid thing he said at the end was that he's, first of all, that he's going to splat a load of bad reviews all over uh, the, the socials, which, I mean, we can deal with because, you know, it's quite, this bloke never came to our surgery. So I don't know what he's going to say. I never went there and I don't like it. He's going to say something like I... I paid for an appointment and then through no fault of my own I couldn't attend and they wouldn't really refund me the money. So I shall, I shall just reply saying that's 
Now we've had that policy for about the last five years and it's not my fault if you didn't read the read it, you know. And it's not like we hide it away in the small print. You know, this is not a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. This this stuff is in everything. We've it's front and centre in absolutely everything we do. So so he's going to uh, try and uh, try and engineer some sort of. Uh, what's he? He's a powerless bloke, isn't he? He's a moron. He's a he's a, a just. That's what they do. If people if if people have cancelled and you won't refund their money, they just like to they just lash out like children, you know. They're just like, uh, well, I'll I'll spend because their time's not worth much, I don't think. So, you know, for 78 quid, I suppose, he's prepared to sit down for a couple of hours and, you know, try and trash us, but it's not. They can't affect your website. I mean, the only thing that they can do is go on Google reviews and give you a one-star review. But nobody's gonna take any notice of a one-star review from a bloke who's never went to the surgery. All we're gonna have to do is write back and say, yeah, that is correct. If you make an appointment and you don't turn up, uh, you will get charged. You know, if you if you don't give us two days' notice to to uh, uh, rebook the time. Uh, now the other thing he did, which is slightly more interesting, well I think it is. You might think it's oh, you might think it's dead boring, but in fact the other thing that he said he's going to do is he's going to try and recharge the cost to his credit card. In other words, he's going to phone his credit card provider and complain that he was charged for something that he didn't receive. And that's an interesting twist. It's an interesting angle. It's an interesting tactic from someone who's acting like, you know, Generation Alpha, some entitled male Karen, who's like, you know, I, I, you know, I appreciate I broke the rules, but I don't think the rules should apply to me. So I think I should be able to get a refund. I've copped up, I've made a, an idiot myself, but I want my money back. You know, these are the sort of people that you read about in the Sunday Times. Uh, money column, you know, say, well, I, uh, somebody rang me up and asked me to send them £5,000. And uh, their uh, number on the phone was the number of my bank. It did come up and say, Lloyds Bank Limited. So what I did was I gave them my... Um, my credit card number and my PIN number of my card and uh, then I later found out it was a scam and uh, so uh, Lloyds, uh, but Lloyds won't refund me the money because they said that I didn't take sufficient care of my PIN number, my secret PIN number and uh, please can you help me? And I'm sure of a brain transplant, nothing is really going to help that person are they, is it? So, <laughs> oh dear, nearly home. So anyway, what's going to happen is he's going to uh, reclaim the 78. The, the credit card company in the first instance will instantly give him his money back. And they will then write to us and say, this guy's reclaimed 78 quid. What's your side of the story? And my side of the story will be, you made an appointment. It's our terms and conditions say that... Um, uh, if he if he cancels at last minute, then gotta let these people pass because I've got to reverse him. And uh, we sent him this, these two SMSs and this, these two emails and blah blah blah. And these these three invoices, they're all quite clearly stating this. Therefore, we don't believe them. Um, and and the time was uh, wasted. Now, therefore, we don't believe that um, he's entitled to a refund. And then if his card provider, MasterCard or Visa, looks at it and looks at our evidence, uh, then then what will happen is it will get debited from him again and then uh, we'll, we'll then get a receiving. So, but the point is, you know, and I mean, he knows this probably, that he's just trying to cause aggro, isn't he? He just wants to... He thinks that we've caused some aggro for him, and therefore he wants to cause some aggro for us. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, you know, I mean, it, it crossed my mind. 
for like one tenth of a second just to give him his money back but um, uh, the problem is that because this is a novel approach and it's the first time that anyone's tried to do it like this um, then what I'd rather do is I'd rather go through the process and see if it's uh, you, they can get any traction because if it turns out that it's true that the uh, that they can pay in advance and then not turn up and then and then just reclaim the money back if they paid on credit card then again we're going to have to we're going to have to make the first visit cash only or something I don't know but we'll we'll win we'll win in the end but and I don't think he'll win this anyway but anyway I'll keep it I'll I'll keep it as they you know didn't tell you anything about any of the other stuff did I never mind I have to wait all right Nice to talk to you. Bye.